when I first got there, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Okay. And I was introduced, I ended up there because I was working on a ship stopping the pilots hijacking the vessels. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. So, I used to, we used to berth there, as in the ship used to park there for the layman's turns. Uh -huh. And I was really hiding it. <laughs> I'm hiding you. Yeah. And what happened from there is I saw a lot of business opportunities. Mm -hmm. So you said you saw like a business opportunity. Yeah, I saw business opportunities. And basically it was like this. I believed, I looked at it and I said, you know what? Everything that's in England, within reason, is going to need to be in Kenya. Yeah. Or Africa as a whole. Mm -hmm. And it's like I have a crystal ball because I come... In, in birth from England okay. so I know what we we have and also I know what works I just have to consider that the cultural mindset is different mm -hmm. now in saying that Kenya has 42 different tribes mm. and they do have sub tribes as well yeah. and every tribe does their thing either extremely different or slightly different yeah. you, you know and you've got to understand that so when you're doing business, mm -hmm. but what you do have, they have a, a light West African from my understanding. Yes. They have a love for everything Western. Mm -hmm. So if you can sell something as a Western theme, mm -hmm. they will grab it with yeah. both hands and run with it. Okay. And that's where I started to look at, okay, what businesses would be a good idea to set up here? In Kenya. Yes. And I looked at it and I thought, well, let's go and live with the people because the everyday people. I could have gone and lived in a wealthier area, mm -hmm. but I chose, no, let me go and live in, the, um, let's say their working class area, but okay. their working class area is... Not, not is, the village or... No, it wasn't a village. Area. It wasn't a... Because I was in Mombasa. Okay. And Mombasa is the second biggest City. in Kenya, okay, yeah. but Mombasa is not very big at all. Mm. It takes time to get from one side to the other. That's just because of bad infrastructure. Yeah. But generally, it's not big. Okay. It's really, really not big. Yeah. And, you know, if we laid a good road down there, uh -huh. I would argue, probably take half an hour to get from one side to the other, if that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, I just looked at, I would have stayed with the poor working class people. Uh -huh. And somewhere in these flats, that were, you could say, the flats and the parents were nice, but there was, I, my background's also commercial construction. Yeah. So I looked at it and I said, well, I could see problems with their construction methods. Okay. I could, and it usually stems down to people not understanding how to build houses and mm. things. Uh, maintenance as well. Yeah, and there's maintenance and there's also things like damp proof coursing, which yeah. is a big issue. Okay. Um, where people don't understand mm. um, and I, obviously there's good construction methods mm -hmm. out there but but I didn't really see that in Mombasa Nairobi is the capital yeah. so that's somewhat different that's a different beast a different story mm. in that respect so did you see that as a business opportunity as well to help with construction of the flat or to maintain the flat well to tell you the truth I did Okay. I looked at it and my f original project, I was going to do building houses mm -hmm. in Africa. Yeah. And where I was going to build houses in Africa, uh, we had an agreed with a local lady. She's a Kikuyu lady. They called her a mama because okay. she's elderly. Yeah. And she owned a big plot of a slum. Massive. Mm. It's like the slum was like the size of two or three blocks um square blocks okay. of housing or yeah. um, like a blocks what americans would call the blocks mm -hmm. and um people were had and the idea was she would invest the land i would bring the money yeah. i would oversee the construction being built yeah. we're going to build 35 units mm -hmm. so it's 35 flats mm -hmm. in one block mm -hmm. and then we're going to sell them on plan yeah and so by the time we finished, uh, by the time we've, um, before we finished um, building all those flats, yeah. they're all sold 
and then we can start building on another section. Okay. So, um, do you mind me asking, how are you going to get funding for the building? I know she was going to provide the land. But well, I had money. Okay, okay. I had been working on ships for five years, stopping okay. the pirates, hijacking the vessels. Okay. I'd uh, been earning money. I also was I willing to sell my flat mm -hmm. in England mm -hmm. to help contribute to that. To the project? Yeah, to the project. Okay. Now, I was going to... To, for legitimacy, I was going to take some of the local bank's money as well okay. because they have this policy, if you had over 5 million shillings, which mm -hmm. is about £50,000, mm. they would lend you five, five, another 5 million. Okay. Yeah, okay. and stuff like that because okay. they know you've got it anyway. Mm. Well, they, and there's a lot of things to learn from from what I'm saying here. Yeah. For myself as well, now you, now you speak about it. But that was a plan. But the lady had a brother and the brother was the one who introduced the architect okay. to me. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well the architect introduced the brother to me. Yeah. The lady to me and the brother came and got in the middle. Now, this is where you need to understand cultural mindset. Yeah. And I wouldn't just say cultural mindset. There is also, obviously everybody's an individual, yeah. but there are traits with this. Mm -hmm. Now I did say they were Kikuyu, and for the Kikuyus out there, I'm not slandering you lot. I'm just telling you from my yeah. own experience. Okay, I have to put that put disclaimer that out, there, yeah. out there because. <laughs> but, but, no, it's not, I'm not worried about being cancelled. I'm 47. I've got no worries about <laughs> what people are thinking. I'm just putting out things as a fact. Yeah. So. He wanted to be in the business still. Okay. Because he brought his sister to now his sister was a widow. Mm. So originally it was her husband's land, as traditional, you know, the men have all the land and yeah. the women thing. But this was this was interesting because the mama inherited the land. Okay. Now in certain tribes, women are can never inherit anything. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And so their their thing was different. The mama had the land and all of that which was good and you know. This man came to me one day, sat down in the office, and he said to me, I tell you what we do, can you tell me how much you will pay me? <laughs> and I said to him, well, what do you mean? She, he said, well, I want to be in a project, so how As much... an architect. No, he's not an architect, he's just a brother. Okay. Yeah, so the architect I know, mm -hmm. I know the architect through another lady. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The architect came to me. He's got the young. He's the youngest architectural practice in in the country. He okay. was, mm -hmm. and he's based around the corner from there, equivalent of Houses of Parliament. Yeah. So he knew politicians and various different people. Yeah. So he um he introduced me to the mama, and then the brother decided okay. when he heard about it. He so wanted, the brother was not doing anything. That he project. wasn't doing he just anything. Wanted he just wanted to try and make some money. He's that family member that yeah. everybody loves, but they wish they didn't have. Yeah, you yeah. could say yeah. <laughs> to put it nicely. Yeah. So he said, "Well, yeah, you must tell me what I'm going to get." So I said to him, "Well, what you surely you're going to sort out of your sister." Mm -hmm. um, and he said, well, no, I need to know from you. And I said to him, okay, well, look at it like this. We're going to build these 35 units. We're going to send, sell them five to seven million shillings each. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, maybe $50,000 to $70,000 each. Mm -hmm. That was at that time. So you're talking like 10 years ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe a bit more, to be honest. Yeah. So I said, we're going to do that. Your mum, your sister decides she wants she wants to have two of those flats. Yeah. So she wants to have actually three. She wants to live in one and rent the other two. Okay. So that means I will, I'm I'm going to sell her those yeah, flats yeah, yeah. at the at the local rate. Okay. At the rate. So if it's seventy thousand shilling, seventy thousand dollars each, mm -hmm. that's three. You know, hundred and forty. Uh, sorry, two hundred and um, 10,000 she's going to have to give me but then half of it's going to be half of that because it's 50-50 in the deal okay. do you understand? Yeah. but she's going to have to give me my section yeah. he said yeah but what will I get? and I said well alright look at it like this imagine I tell you you can get a flat mm -hmm. yeah? yeah but that's going to come from your sister's side 
because yeah, you're her that's cl- fair. you're her clan that's fair when i go to when, what will happen your sister will take me to court and say you gave one of your your properties to the brother and you refused to give your the sister the other mm. three properties you're only giving her two yeah now i will say to the judge yeah but judge that's what he came to me and talked and he said did you have a contract with the, him yeah because it's not even privy to the original contract in the first place. So, so. so, and I said, all that the judge will tell me is I have to give one of my own properties to your sister and I'm out of pocket. Mm. And then he went quiet. Exactly. <laughs> now, I could have said to him, well, I'll tell you what we do. We'll allow you to supply the building material, so mm-hmm. you'll make money through that. But I could see that he, in my eyes, he wasn't a good person. No, he was going to do you. So I just sat there and then he went, I'm not a bad person. <laughs> I'm not a bad person. You know, he kept on saying that. And um, I didn't say anything. I just looked at him. I said, okay. And then when I went back to the architect, the architect turned around and said, Hey, um, he said, You're stupid. You should have told him that you'll give him five million uh, um, verbally mm-hmm. and then just got on with the business deal. And then he would have, and then you could have told him, oh, so that can't happen again at the end. Uh, no, he could. Because he, he knows how to do with these people, so that was. Yeah, but the architect, now if you hear what the architect was, the architect was like this. He actually turned around and said, um, well, we need to sign, uh, it was a letter of intention. Yeah. Memorandum of understanding, letter of intention. Yeah. And what we'll do, we will get some building machines, diggers, to dig around the soil and do yeah. all this and do that. We kick off all the ho- all the shantytown people very quickly. Mm-hmm. And then if the mum decides to, mama decides to pull out, we will go to court and say, well, we put, yeah, we put loads of money in those groundworks already. Yeah. And therefore we need her to sell her land or give us a percentage of the land or we t- or we just take we say we put in let's say her land was worth one million dollars we said well we did one million dollars worth of groundworks in that yeah. and and labor and the taxes we got to pay so we're going to take her land her land from her yeah. and i looked at that and i said and i thought to myself you're willing to do this to an old woman hmm. because clearly we weren't going to do that yeah. He said, "We're just. I get some. I know some politicians. I know some um, business people, oh, yeah. and um, um, law- lawyers, and they will write up what we have to. As long as we so give them a fee." That's specific performance, and just a little bit of education. Yeah. That's specific. Thank you. So what I'm saying, what I looked at that was, you're not the person I need to be in bed with in this situation, yeah. because if you could do that to an old woman who's of your it's nation. Very yeah. Of, of your nation, only God knows only what you do to me. Who's a friend? Well, no, I wouldn't even say a friend. So, a business associate. Yeah. So anyway, he he used to. I kind of just knocked that on the head, but he used to come to me all the time and say, "Yeah, what about this deal? What about that?" Mm. He's always and what he'd done, he'd introduced me to so many different people. Yeah. But everybody looked like him. Oh, really? Yeah, because. In Kenya, as in many countries in Africa, a tribe comes first. That's true. So he introduced me to all of his, all of his business associates or people he knows, but they were all his tribe. Yeah. Well, that may not seem like anything. It may seem like what the Indians do, what the Jewish do, what yeah. those things do. But what my argument is, you're not trying to get me the best people. Yeah. You're just trying to keep the money in house. And I wouldn't be surprised if you asked all those people for a commission mm-hmm. for introducing me to them if I was going to do business with them. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I'm paying extra money for things I don't really need or I could have found myself. Mm-hmm. And what I learned from that is, is as a saying, you hire quickly and uh, hire slowly and fire quickly. Perfectly. And it's yeah. the same thing in business. That's you. True. You um, you take time to establish yourself in business with mm-hmm. people. Mm. So there's no rush. At all, yeah. There's no rush because you've got everything to lose. That's true. Yeah? And even if you... Even if the business opportunity goes, it's better it goes, yeah, mm-hmm. than, than you lost out everything that you had at everything. the start. Yeah. 
and obviously you fire quickly so if you realize it's, it's this is not the person that who they who you thought they were mm -hmm. then just run mm -hmm. just cut your losses don't start trying to think oh, hang in there just to see this or see that no you use like serious discernment you really have like serious discernment because it would, it would for, i feel like for another person it would probably have taken them some time to like you know discern that this guy was not like legit or even if he was like he was cut through he was you made a good observation mm. that you know he was just introducing you to his people so that was a good discernment on your part mm. So, thanks. So what I did, I had a gym. Yeah. I started a gym when I was out there, and where I started the gym, it was like he used to come down and say, "Oh, your gym's not making money down here. Now why don't you move it to Nairobi? I can find you a good patch." Wow. Yeah. Like some the I yeah. don't know. Yeah, but, don't kinda. yeah, but this is how you know. This is how some people operate that's how some yeah. people survive yeah. you know they, they always just want they want easy money yeah. let me introduce you to somebody and then, uh, uh, and then I say you give me ah oh, so you're going to look after me for introducing you to that person yeah. you say to the other person can you, you, you look after me and you get paid both things yeah. if you can't put your name in a contract or anything you walk away with a load of money and you just introduce two people yeah, yeah it, and, and you don't care if it's in my interest that's true yeah, or any, anything, is it a good rate or all these things? And these are the things you need to be aware of. Now, yeah. this, I haven't done business in England on the scale I've done business in Africa. Mm. So I can't say this is only subject to East Africa East from Africa, where my experience, yeah. because I understand I've got many stories on my podcast, mm -hmm. Africa Investor Stories, mm -hmm. for those who are listening. Mm -hmm. And um, it's on YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> and um, you know, I've even heard, heard of things like this in England. Yeah. But the difference is, and what I would say to anybody who's interested in investing in England is, uh, in Africa, yeah. is don't let people do for you what you can easily do yourself. True. And that's what I mean when it comes to documentation, mm. it verifying things. People say, oh, I'll go to the local council, they call it the municipal in mm. Kenya. Oh, yeah. Um, and sort this out well no yeah. I will go, go, go and go. one of the things that the government makes it really difficult crutch and really easy for things out there mm -hmm. is because they don't put the laws on the website yeah. they need to have the government so website a lot of people don't, are not abreast with yeah. the laws so yeah. the laws should be on there yeah. so people who want to invest know what the laws are know what the thing and they should be paying directly to the government mm. the problem was you would go and pay the local municipal person the representative. Uh, and they would only say well let's say they're checking your documentation mm. um well i had a situation where i was in the gym mm. and they're checking and i had all my certificates they would in, uh give me my music license mm. so you can play music in the gym really? unless i pa unless unless i paid another fee to them privately wow yeah wow. do you understand yeah understand. but this also it comes down to who you know that's true now, if yeah. you get loyal staff the staff are local yeah. so you will find out who knows it turns out one of the staff is related to the local policeman mm. another person mm. knows the mayor's secretary related to mayor's secretary do you understand so yeah. you can navigate your way around these things it may seem that's annoying a, you know that's how it is in africa like it's, well, it's, it's how it is in, in many parts of the world no, especially in Africa, even like with businesses and stuff, a lot of people have made their successes through people that they know. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. Yeah. So these are the things I've had to navigate mm. and stuff. It's been a very interesting conversation with you. It has. I hope it it's has. been insightful. Is there very we've, insightful? We we've got. Um, well, it's bringing back memories. Have you got any last questions? You got four minutes that you want to ask. Um. Do you feel like living there was fulfilling? I put it this way. In England, you have walls and barriers and fences everywhere. Mm. When I was in Kenya, I used to take the, I had my gym and I used to take the clients on a walk, hike. Mm. 
Mm. And I used to get a compass out, be an ex-military, and I used to say, okay, we're going to walk on this bearing, mm. and we could walk straight for 30 miles. Mm. Wow. Not a fence, not, it's, like, the land is just as God made it. It's just bare. <laughs> it, well, it's not bare, it is wildlife, there's rivers you yeah. have to cross, there's yeah. all these different things. But it's, you set a sense of freedom. And one of the things I really loved is that no one had a letterbox. You don't have a letterbox. That means no one's chasing you with bills and all yeah. of these things. Yeah. And you, there's a, a lot of freedom. I do like the yeah. fact that yeah. you get to build your own house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You buy that, you build your house. That's yeah. great in that respect. Yeah. Well, we've come to the end of the journey now. Thank you. This was very insightful. Thanks a lot this for doing the interview. Thank you. And I wish you well. Wish you well too. We hope that episode enhanced your life. We post an interview every day as well as vlogging on our social media channel. Don't forget to subscribe to get our latest episode.